turn it over to you for an opening statement and then questions. Okay. Um, obviously, a lot uh, more enjoyable end of the weekend uh, this week and uh, positive start to uh, game week for SMU. Um, you know, able to take a good look at the film from uh, last Saturday, make some uh, make some corrections, uh, see some things that we did very well. Um, you know, went out and had a, a short practice uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, spent the remainder of Sunday and all day uh, yesterday and this morning, obviously, uh, breaking down the SMU, um, you know, quality football team. Uh, they've had a little bit extra time to get ready for us. Uh, should be fresh and come into the game seven and two, obviously. Uh, with one of the top offenses in the country. So, um, you know, going to be a great challenge this weekend, uh, but very, very excited about, uh, you know, the opportunity, the matchup, and excited to be at home. So uh, the kids will be very motivated this week. Uh, they're very excited for uh, the challenge, uh, and they're just very excited for, you know, the chance to really finish the season strong. So I expect us to get great effort uh, throughout the week and uh, a great performance on Saturday. And we'll open it up to questions. Coach, will there be anything going on Saturday as far as a senior day recognition? There will. Um, and, you know, much like the entire uh, 2020, um, you know, things are just different this year. And, you know, I think back to, you know, my last game as a college player and, and senior day. Uh, and, you know, being able to walk out with my parents and uh, still got the photo of, you know, mom and dad on either side of me and, you know, being recognized in front of a, a, a full home stadium. Um, that is not our reality this year. And that's, uh, I really feel for, uh, you know, those student athletes participating in our senior day this week uh, from a standpoint of, you know, they're not going to have that opportunity to have the parents down there with them. Uh, you know, they're not going to have the opportunity to be recognized in front of a packed uh, Dottie Ficklin Stadium. Uh, it is going to be, um, just like everything else with 2020, it's, it's going to be, you know, significantly impacted. Uh, we'll have a small group that we'll be recognizing on, on Saturday, uh, and it's a group that has, you know, contributed greatly to the program uh, in their time here, and, uh, and will leave here as graduates of East Carolina University. Uh, and prepared to make, um, you know, positive impact on, uh, you know, our society. And, uh, you know, I look forward to honoring them, but I just do feel for them in that it's not going to be, you know, the traditional senior day recognition that we all, you know, recognize. Coach, uh, you come into this ball game, uh, Cincinnati is ranked 17th in passing nationally, 14th in overall yards. And, but amongst the 72 record overall, there are two losses. Um, the Cincinnati and Tulsa are very similar to the two losses that you've had to those same ball clubs. You've got to feel pretty good about your chances for this to be a competitive ball game this week if you guys play like you're, you're capable of doing. Well, I think, I think that SMU is, you know, a very solid program. Uh, senior quarterback uh, who, you know, is one of the best ones in our conference. Uh, really, really talented skill positions. Um, you know, defensively, I think that they are an improved unit from last year. Uh, I think they're playing better together. Uh, and, you know, looking at them, you're a very complete group on special teams. So, you know, I think that they are, you know, exactly what the record says they are. They're a seven and two team. It's one of the better teams in our league. Uh, and, you know, it's going to be a great challenge this weekend. But, you know, just like, uh, you know, just like every other game we've had, our, our kids are excited for the opportunity uh, and, you know, we're excited for, uh, you know, the, the matchup and look forward to uh, being able to kick off at 12 o'clock here in Daddy Ficklin Stadium. Hey, Coach, this is maybe not a, a fun question to ask or it could get tricky, but with Thanksgiving in particular and gatherings and kind of what's going on with this right. week, and CDC and whatnot, I mean, most weeks or seasons, I imagine you would let local players go home to their family or have a meal if they wanted to. I mean, will you allow that for a better word or will you kind of bubble it this week? How will you handle – guys maybe going off campus or seeing families at all? You know, what we've talked about is, you know, we're going to have practice Thursday morning. We're going to have a uh, COVID protocol appropriate uh, Thanksgiving uh, lunch together as a team. Uh, and it's, you know, it's the way we've been having to eat for, you know, the past, you know, several months uh, with the spacing, 
masks and just all the protocols in place with serving. Uh, we're going to do that together as a team. We're going to give them a, a, a to-go dinner to take with them. Uh, and what I've asked of them is just, listen, guys, you've got one more week as far as protecting each other. You know, just let's, let's just be conscientious of staying within our bubble. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, they just got to be smart um, in that if they, if they do do anything uh, with a family here in the local area, that they are very conscientious about protecting themselves because they're protecting their teammates. Um, you know, we will have testing next week uh, to, make, to make sure that we come out of the weekend clean before we release the student athletes to go home back to their, uh, you know, homes for Christmas break. Um, but, you know, we still got to finish strong with everything on the field and off the field. Coach, can you talk about the pros and cons of not scheduling another game while, you know, a lot of the conference will be playing into December, but obviously this will be your, your final game. Right. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we have had looked at for a while, and I'll tell you, it, it, it got really tricky here in the past month just from a standpoint of, you know, you saw, I don't know what the number is, but, you know, probably close to two dozen games postponed or canceled last weekend. I think you're going to see a similar number this weekend. Um, you know, I, I was really shaky with these next two games a few weeks back. Um, you know, were we going to be able to play the Temple game and the SMU game? It looks like we were going to get both of them in, but, I mean, it was touch and go. And so uh, there was hesitation from that standpoint of scheduling another opponent. Um, there's also some financial implications. Uh, you know, dorms and uh, dining halls close on Sunday. You know, you talk about uh, housing and feeding a team for 200 people for another week. I mean, obviously, that's a significant financial uh, piece. Um, there's other pieces in place or other, other factors in place that I'd be glad to discuss postseason uh, that internally we're aware of that maybe everybody in the surroundings are not. Uh, we just felt like all things considered, we needed to make sure we finished the season that we had on paper uh, and, and keep our focus right there. Um, there are pluses to playing an additional game. Uh, but we've, we've been fortunate to be able to play the schedule we have because if you'd asked me back in August and September if we would have played, you know, nine games this fall, I would have told you there's no way. Uh, I thought we were going to play four or five at best. When you look at uh, wrapping up this season, uh, maybe long term, maybe, how do you think this season will, will be remembered? It's obviously been a, been a crazy one, but it – uh, did it bring the team closer together just culture wise or was it just an accomplishment getting through it? Or, I mean, what are the things you maybe, maybe will take away from a year like this? You could probably say all of it. I mean, it's none of us have ever been through anything like this. And, um, you know, I do think the one I'm cautiously say wise thing that the NCAA did was giving everyone an extra year of eligibility. Uh, I think that's wise from the standpoint of, none of the players were prepared for this season. I mean, it's, you look at, at why certain things are happening. I think this is something to really discuss, you know, publicly a little bit, you know, after the season's over with, you know, not having spring practice and summer training, you, you cannot grasp the impact that that had on our young players, the negative impact that that had on our young players. Um, so, you know, they were not prepared for a college football season the way they should be. Uh, especially to play a 12-game schedule. Um, on the other hand, I am thankful for the games that we have gotten to play because without getting spring practice, I mean, C.J. Johnson has never had a spring practice. I mean, you guys would say he's a pretty veteran player. He's never had a spring practice. The vast majority of our team has never had an offseason. Um, that is something that is so critical to the development of this program as we build it. So I'm thankful for the games we've had this fall because we've been able to, you know, get more out of this than you would have a spring practice. You've been able to get so much experience for guys. You've been able to see what a lot of guys can do, what some can't do. You saw some position changes. You're going to see some more because of things that happened on the field this fall. And the great thing is I think you have been able to bring the group together culturally, cohesively, um, and, and you see that from – you know, the videos you've seen from inside our locker room or if you've been able to be at practice every day, you know, this team does practice. You know, they practice full speed. They practice with some physicality. 
There's not a, you know, they don't loaf around the practice field. You know, we've got some positive habits in place. So there's so much positive coming out of playing this fall. And, you know, we've, we've shown, you know, uh, closing the gap competitively with other teams in our conference and winning multiple conference games. Um, you know, are you going to look back and say, you know, you should have gotten Navy or you got Tulsa and you got, you know, didn't get it, you know, yeah, you can say all that stuff, but we got to play those games. And so there's been so much good and bad. It is a special season. It is, it is unlike any other that I've ever had. I hope I never have one like this again. Uh, we're going to take a team photo on Saturday because I do, or on Sunday, because I do think that this group, I mean, there's something to be said about the perseverance that it took to make it through 2020 in a pandemic. Um, so how is it going to be remembered? It's going to be remembered for a lot of different things. Coach, with uh, UCL going for nearly 2,800 yards and Bentley good for almost 900 on the ground, how do you approach uh, this game defensively against SMU? We've got our hands full. You know, that's – you got one of the top rushers uh, in the conference in the tailback. And then uh, Bouchelle, I mean, he's had a great career there at SMU. Uh, you know, is he going to be back next year or not? I don't know. I would, if I had to bet, I'd say probably not. He's probably going to go ahead and turn pro. Uh, but obviously, he's one of the top quarterbacks in our league uh, and has had an outstanding year. Um, you know, Coach Dykes and his staff, they do a great job offensively there. Um, you know, scheme-wise, uh, they do a lot of the same things they did last year, and I think they've evolved also. So I think we've got our hands full on Saturday. Coach, when you look back at, at last year's final game, I know the, the Tulsa game didn't go how you wanted it. How important is it just to maybe go out and play play the way you guys – you know you're capable of playing to, to take some momentum into the offseason? Well, that was my message to the team on Sunday. And I think that they – you know, I, there's no doubt that they feel the exact same way. You know, you want to finish the season strong. Um, you know, you want to you want to see us put together the complete ball game. You know, I think we've we've done we've done that a little bit against South Florida, you know, a little bit against Tulsa. Uh, certainly, there were some strong phases against Navy. There were some strong phases against Temple. Uh, but as far as everything clicking in all three phases, you know, we haven't. I don't, I don't think we've done that this year. And so um, that that's a big thing I talked to him about on Sunday. Uh, I promise you, they want to. Um, and, you know, my, 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 my message, you know, here in a few minutes when we talk to them is going to be, you know, let's have those kind of practices. We talked about on Sunday, we got to have that kind of Tuesday practice today. You know, everybody trying to sync on the same page. That's going to take a lot of focus. It's going to take a lot of effort. Uh, but, you know, I do think we have positive momentum coming out of, you know, being able to pull, pull one off up in Philadelphia when, you know, whether we were going to play or not was really in question. And so, I think that positive momentum we can use to build on this week, and hopefully we can see that kind of performance on Saturday. <clears throat> what was that moment like with Elijah and being able to give him that news after a win? Yeah, I've been waiting on the right moment. And like I, I told him, you know, I spoke to his father about a month ago uh, because that kid's earned – he's earned the right to be on scholarship here at East Carolina. And, uh, you know, he bet on himself. He had multiple scholarship opportunities at lower divisions. Uh, he came to our camp twice, uh, summer before last, uh, came here and walked on, uh, was given nothing, earned everything. Uh, and, you know, I wanted it to be the right moment. And I just thought, you know, he had the big turnover early in the ball game that, you know, another example of him being in the right place at the right time. He had a very solid performance on Saturday. Uh, and just, I wanted it to be exactly what it turned out to be because, uh, you know, he is, he has the traits and, and, and the, the things about him as a person uh, uh, and being able to coach him. You know, he is what you enjoy about coaching. You know, he's a, a kid that's going to maximize his God-given ability. He's going to be a great teammate. He's going to be a great leader. He's got that toughness, you know, plays hard. Uh, you know, all those traits that, uh, that you're building the program on. And so to be able to celebrate that after a win with his teammates and for them to see that because they, they watch him every day. They see what he puts into his, his uh, you know, pre preparation each day, and, and they see that he's earned it. And so to, to have them, you know, be able to celebrate there with him on Saturday is just – it's a special moment that he'll never forget. It's a special moment I'll never forget, and I'm sure the rest of his family, uh, you know, just a special moment for them. 
And when you look at Tyler <laughs> Sneed, he's leading the team in receptions and receiving yards heading into the last game. And maybe not a lot of people would have predicted that, I guess, with, with the talent you have at receiver. I mean, does that just speak to his consistency and how he's kind of shown up, seems like, each week and kind of gotten better as the season has progressed? Yeah, I definitely do. I mean, I, you look at his performance last year against SMU and then you watch him right now. I mean, I, I do think he's a significantly improved player. Um, you know, he's, he's bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, and uh, he's that competitive nature that he has. And um, he's had a great year on offense. Uh, you know, I look forward to, you know, hopefully having another great game on Saturday. Uh, but he's had a great game in the return game, you know, punt return and kickoff return this year as well. Um, and he's just a guy that you, you always know what you're going to get. Very similar to Elijah Morrison in the character traits. You know, you're, he's always going to maximize his ability. He, he's, he's going to play with toughness and edge. He's going to compete every day. Uh, he's going to do things right off the field. He's going to be a great leader. You know, the more guys you can get like that and playing like that, then the better your program is going to be. So, um, you know, I, are you surprised? Yes. Are you not surprised? Yes. I mean, I think that uh, he's a guy that you can never count out. Coach, it seems like every week we're seeing more freshmen play. Uh, Stribling and Deontay Johnson this past weekend. Can you just talk about their play and kind of how they progressed this season? Yeah, I was, I was really, I was really proud of Walt. Um, you know, he's played a little bit throughout the year this year, but not much. Um, has really improved drastically since he got here uh, back in January. Um, He's going to be a really good player for us. Uh, I thought he, I thought he held his own well on Saturday because I was, I was a little concerned because of the matchups with um, the defensive ends at Temple, uh, and, and you know number twelve and 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 Boozer both, you know those guys are are, are great players. I know seventeen did not play, uh, but you know matchup wise for a young tackle that was going to be tough. And I thought he held his own. Um, maybe one or two plays where he got beat, but not many. And to, and to play against those caliber of players in this league, uh, that at that level, I thought that was a pretty pretty impressive first time out. And we talked about it Friday night. Just, you know, I remember my first college start. He'll always remember his first college start. Uh, and, you know, he was prepared for the moment and, uh, and, and, and played well. Deontay Johnson, you know, another young guy that has, you know, really come on throughout the fall, you know, you, you earn those reps, you know, and it, it started about a month ago from his performance on the scout team defense uh, and continuing to show show over there. So we you know, started getting him reps with, the, you know, the first group, and the second group, uh, and he continued to develop there and earn those reps. And it was exciting to see him get in the ball game, have a couple of tackles, uh, had a tackle for a loss. Uh, just, you know, really excited for him. Uh, just like with all the rest of that group, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's going to be a, a really a foundational group for this program for the years, for years to come uh, because of, you know, the ability of the group, but also the number of the group. Coach, get a good game uh, this weekend, play the kind of game that you're capable of playing. We'll do a lot to sustain this ball club through the off season and coming into the next year's conference season. Um, talk about that and how important it is just to play like you're capable of playing this week. Well, I just think we want positive momentum going into the off season. I think that would be that would be the perfect way to end it. Now, it's it, it's not going to be easy. Now, I, it, people need to understand we're facing a, a extremely challenging opponent. So, you know, we'll have to play our best game of the year to have a shot to win it. But we're capable of it, and uh, so it's uh, it's something that we all want. Uh, but nobody's going to give us anything. It's, it's it's we've talked about that all year long. No matter how much you want to, you know, you know get that win here, get that win there. Nobody's going to give you anything. And sometimes you got to beat them, you know, three or four times to get the win. So um, it's just, it's going to be challenging, but it's going to be something that we're, you know, we're working very hard this week in order to earn. Okay. Is there any, anything else? Okay. Just uh, any other questions from any, anybody? Do want to just uh, one kind of bonus uh, this week. Um, did want to you know announce that uh, Deontay Smith has accepted an invitation for the Reese's Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. Um, you know, just like everything else, it's going to be uh, you know it's going to be a different year for it. Um, it's going to be played on January the 30th, uh, 2021. Um, 
Deontay, you know, has, has had a great career here at East Carolina. Um, I hate that he got robbed of his senior year. Uh, you know, not, it certainly it hurt us on the field, uh, not having a player of that ability out there every, every weekend, but also, um, you know, it, it, it robbed him of that opportunity as well. Um, but, you know, he's made the decision that he is ready to, you know, move on with what's next in his career. And so accepting an invitation to the Senior Bowl will give him a great opportunity uh, to be able to perform uh, one last time for the Pro Scouts uh, ahead of the uh, 2021 draft. Uh, so we're excited for this opportunity for Deontay. Um, along with this announcement, I do have him. I'm going to grab him real quick. He's sitting right outside my office. Just give you guys a few minutes to spend with him, um, you know, him to be able to talk about this opportunity and his time here at East Carolina. At the same time, any questions that you guys might have. So if you'll just excuse me for a second, I'll grab Deontay. Hey, Deontay, how are you? I'm doing good. What about you? We're doing well, sir. Uh, we're just going to let the media uh, ask some questions. Um, so just uh, sit back and relax and enjoy, okay? Yes, sir. Deontay, uh, before we, we talk about your senior bowl opportunity, just talk about obviously your ECU career. You, you've been here a long time. What does this place mean to you, and uh, how do you kind of put it into words? Uh, coming here, really almost still 17 years old. It just taught me a lot about growing up and uh, branching out, being my own man and making decisions for myself, not being a follower. And, you know, it also taught me that uh, I can do things that I, I always had in line for myself, but that when it got hard, I had people around here that can keep pushing me and uh, keep me on track. And how thankful are you for this senior bowl opportunity, obviously, to, you know, you haven't been able to play much this year, but to kind of get one more shot to, to show off for some scouts and, and you know, make some um, impressions before the draft. Yes, sir. I'm extremely uh, thankful. Uh, this is a big opportunity for me. I've been watching the senior bowl since I was in high school, covering it just like I, like a normal fan would. So this is a big opportunity, and, and, I'm, and I'm happy that I got the uh, chance to accept it. Deontay, can you talk about how you're progressing physically at this point and uh, how you feel like you're going to be come January? So, yes, sir. Uh, I'm progressing physically. I'm going to be way bigger than I've probably been at East Carolina in the last couple of years, but uh, I'm going to be ready to show my best. What will the training process be like? Are, are you going to work out uh, daily or just kind of are you going to get with a trainer? Kind of walk us through what the process will be like leading up to that, that point. So uh, right now, I'm currently still finishing my deciding factor, my uh, my indecisions on how I'll be training, but I am currently still working with uh, our strength and conditioning coaches. And when did you find out? Is there a timeline as far as you got the invitation? I mean, did they send you something electronically or an email or paper? Like, how did you kind of find out you were going to get to this opportunity? Uh, I talked to uh, my coaches, and uh, I accepted them invitation so that's kind of how it went. Yante, how, how frustrating was this senior year? I mean you, you got to play in the first game the majority of that game obviously and I know you have big goals as a team so can you kind of put that in the words just kind of how frustrating that's been? Yes sir it was, it was definitely frustrating for me. I had uh, goals that I wanted to accomplish with this season uh, with our team and, and personal goals also and uh, it just uh it just it just didn't happen the way I wanted it to. This year's been different for everyone. It's just something I got to roll with and, and keep going. Thank God for everything he's put me through and, and just continue to grow. And I've, I've noticed you've been on the sidelines for, for pretty much every game, cheering on your teammates and, and everything there. How important has that been to still stay involved, keep supporting those guys? I mean, like I said, with the people on this team, the ECU family that I've, I've uh, been around for these past five years, it's just these are the people that have, that have helped me grow also. So these are like family to me. So it's just me showing love to the people that show love to me at all times. I'm just happy to see them work hard and succeed and get get to do things that we always talk about. So with this experience that you've had at East Carolina, uh, talk about uh, what all it's meant to you um, as you as you kind of wind things up at ECU, uh, this this time in East Carolina has meant a lot to me. 
it's, it's uh, allowed me to get my education, my degree in economics. It has allowed me to continue to grow as a man and as a person, continue to mature. And uh, it has allowed me to continue with my goals that I have for myself in life. So I really appreciate this opportunity at East Carolina. Okay, are there any other questions for, for Deontay? Okay, Deontay, thank you for your time. No problem, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it, everybody. Talk to you soon.